Chenery, one of the engineers at Whiteline, responsible for all the project work globally on the new BRZ, uh, Sign FRS, and obviously the GT86 and the 86, wherever you want to call it around the world. And one of the things we're just talking about, obviously, generally with the work that we're doing with our project BRZ here in Sydney, is Dave made the comment of how dramatically different these cars were. Now, one of the commitments from Whiteline globally is um, Dave's probably one of the few people in the world that's been all around to be able to drive all three cars. And you're saying that there is a noticeable difference between the three cars. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit for the people obviously watching? Yeah, basically, um, what you can find when we first drove the Scion over in the States, uh, the, the vehicle uh, seemed to handle quite well. It was fairly highly damped, had a good spring rate, uh, low profile tyres. We came back, we drove the 86. We noticed the 86 was fairly uh, soft in feel. Uh, it, was, it was spongy compared to the Scion and we jumped in the BRZ and drove the BRZ as well. And the BRZ is very, in comparison to the Scion, um, compared to the 86 is, is soft with a high profile tyre. They're not quite as wide. Um, they're damped a lot softer. They're more of a, a, a comfort car. The, the Scion and the BRZ are probably the two aggressive um, out, of the, out of the three in the lineup. It's not to say that you can't get the 86 to handle, but you've got to put a bit of money into it to get bring it up to the same spec. So do you think the difference between the two, obviously there's a price difference mm. there of about what, two or three thousand dollars. Yeah. Do you think, I mean you made the comment that you don't think the 86 has got the plastic under trays like the BRZ has. Mm. Um, obviously you spoke about the suspension. Do you think some of these are the areas that possibly uh, Toyota and Subaru have reduced some of the manufacturing costs to pass on as a cheaper car to from a volume point of view? Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, there's a, there's, looks like there's been a little bit more aero development work done on the BRZ uh, in the way of under trays and under the vehicle. Um, yes, uh, Subaru have um, done a little bit more work on the on the suspension side. I think that's probably what a lot of the hold-up was in releasing the vehicle. Uh, it's, it's more designed along the lines of uh, what they would do in the STI range in the Impreza. Uh, it's, it's damped hard, it's sprung hard, it's more of a, a performance feel vehicle, whereas the 86 is more of a uh, drive every day to work sort of car. Not to say that you can't in the BRZ, but um, the BRZ's more of, a, more of that sort of thoroughbred STI feel to and yet, it. And yet they've got a, an STI um, concept car already released overseas, which I've yeah, well. pictures of as well. So one of the things I'm interested to comment on is obviously a lot of people want to know from Whiteline's point of view, um, does that mean there's going to be different parts? I mean, are the same sway bars, any lift kit, um, positive shift kit, all those things that we, we both spoke, obviously they're going to fit both models because the production parts are very, very similar. Are they going to require different setups, do you think, in the way they're tuned because of the different spring and shock rates and tyres? Yeah, I, I mean, it's the same again, you know, like guys put different, um, what we're trying to do is we'll try and do like an across, across the board baseline uh, setup that sort of generally works well for everyone. Um, guys are still going to put their own springs, you know, and dampen setups in the car. They'll vary from vehicle to vehicle. We'll um, set it up as what we sort of think is, is the perfect setup. Um, I think there may be some issues with tuning, like in, in the way of bar rates. I think the bar rates will be the same, but the whole positioning will be um, on the blade adjustable. Of course, you can get adjustable or non-adjustable yeah. sway bars from one line, which obviously makes it easier to change the understeer and oversteer. Mm. And we, we've also commented, obviously, with the rapid development of this car for Motor Magazine Hot Tuna Challenge. I mean, I've driven this now with some of the parts already fitted and we made the comment how much more the car's got a lot more turn in mm. um, because obviously the changes you've made in the front end with the annual lift kit. I mean, yeah. You want to explain a few more details about how the changes, I mean, you were instrumental in their design mm. with the change in the, in the front end of the particular arm combination with that bush. Yeah, well, a few things we found with the um, BRZ, or the whole range, is that the vehicles run uh, practically no static camber uh, from factory, and under bump the vehicles generate basically bugger all uh, negative camber in turn in. What, um, what we have done is we've induced a, a bit of static camber into the vehicle by putting uh, clevis bolts in. Um, that's tidied up a lot of the turn in, um, and we've also 
put in our uh, adjustable strut tops and the um, anti-dive kit in the front, or caster kit as well. Uh, that's brought in a lot more dynamic camber. It's bringing uh, a, a bit of um, uh, dynamic camber on turn in. Probably not as much as we like due to the um, just the geometric setup of the vehicle that um, under roll and under bump, uh, even turn, the vehicle doesn't want to generate a lot of um, uh, dynamic camber. So uh, we, we, we've had a few issues and there's, a, there's been a few, uh, few different um, sort of uh, setup uh, scenarios that we've had to run through to try and get the vehicle to do what we want. But basically we, we, we've sort of had to start with um, a bit more static camber into the, into the vehicle to get the thing to turn up. Uh, to, to get it to turn in. Uh, one thing we did notice with the vehicle is it's um, it's, it's set up very sort of plow understeer. Um, and and yet a lot of people say how much fun this car is to drive. Yeah. And yet I can feel the difference before and after. I mean, mm. driving with this current setting over the weekend, you tip it into a corner, it really turns in so much better, and you can hear the rear um, stability control obviously working mm. well. You turn all the traction control, and stability control off, and man, it's a lot more fun to drive but of course with the increase in static camber with the offset strut top which is a factory bolt in part as well as the clevis pin for neat camber at the base and then the anti-lift kit which gives you a bit more um, caster and then obviously you said dynamic camber on turning obviously the car's now got a lot more grip in the front end with the next change that we've just done with the sway bars and the features and the, I want to comment on the fact that you commented about white lines got a bit different with the way the front bar's been set up you made the comment that you couldn't get a good range of adjustment with the variations in the hole settings to go to a fully adjustable bar so you've actually changed the sway bar shape which now that kit will come with a replacement link Absolutely. to link yep. to the strut um, that gives the user with a white line sway bar a lot more adjustability in the front end of the car with the variations in the holes, which obviously is a lot different to other brands available currently in the market. Would that be right to say? Oh, ab absolutely. At the moment, uh, all the other brands in the market are, are basically fixed replacement. Um, one thing that is uh, quite difficult in um, when you're doing blade adjustable bars is you have to get your um, bar balance and your adjustability front to rear uh, matched. Um, uh, pretty right, and, and, and to do it, it's it's not as easy, especially when you change uh, the complete shape of the bar, which we what we've done on our blade adjustable front, just purely to um, try and package the bar in there. If you notice, like on the OEM bar, the bars actually go in and down between the control arm and steering arm, and there's no room to actually physically package a blade uh, system in there. So we've had to design and change the whole bar, and take into account that guys are going to lower these. Um, they're going to want to run standard height as well. Uh, their, um, the bar ratio front to back combination still works for moving the blade. So there's a, there's a fair bit of testing in R&D and um, you know, we've got a uh, sway bar jig uh, testing machine that does our deflection rate testing so we can match our bar, bar uh, bias ratio front to rear and, and keep the adjustment range um, sort of fairly neutral so that People can yeah. choose between what yeah, they get. They get a fair, fair adjustment. Now, one last final thing. You made the comment about people putting ridiculously big rear sway bars on their car mm. off um, WRXs and SDIs. Yeah. I mean, we all know that's bad, but in your own words, what's the downside? Snap over steer oh, on the liver. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's, no, there's nothing worse, and especially even going out on the track day with a with a bar that's way too big and, and coming down the main straight. And, and um, unloading the rear end for the first time and, and having that thing go on you. Swap ends. Yeah, oh, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's that's a, that's a downside. You just you, you, you're overcoming the lateral um, force that the tyre can actually handle, like without allowing it to load first, um, just with a big bar, and it's it's not it's not pretty. Well, there you have it. Obviously, straight from the horse's mouth, what you can expect with the white line parts, and obviously in combination with MRT here and our project car, which is obviously partnership with um, White Line here in Australia for their global parts for the BRZ GT86 platform. A whole lot of other parts coming, which we can show you some more info with another update shortly. But for today, make a comment on the video channel, um, send us an email, um, tell your friends, because we're here to learn more about the car and help you learn as well from our experience. But for today, on behalf of myself, Brett Middleton, Dave Chenery from White Line here in Australia, thank you.